Well, that, that's a very interesting question. Um, again, if we go back to the 60s and we remember that the race for the moon was on between America and Russia, and to do that, you needed certain minerals, uh, namely cobalt, especially cobalt, which at that time pretty much occurred only in Russia and in the Congo. So if you lost your source of cobalt, you lost the space race. Simple as that. So America couldn't afford to do that. Uh, and they wanted to keep the communists out of Africa. So they, quite frankly, funded almost the entire show. Well, if you remember at the time, there was a wind of change blowing across Africa and the Belgians gave their colony, the Belgian Congo, independence rather hurriedly. And so by 1964, a rebel movement called the Simbas, communist inspired, incidentally, had taken about half the country. The Congolese government appealed for help from neighboring countries. None was forthcoming, so they called for white mercenary soldiers. My father, Mike Hall, was put in charge, and they pushed the rebels back almost entirely over the next 18 months and restored peace to the country, drove the communists out. Yes, that's a question I've had quite a lot because it is, is actually extremely well written. And of course, it was written at the time in 1966. So Everything was fresh. He was the man in charge. So uh, it's, it's an authoritative work. Um, but more than that, M Mike was a lover of literature. He knew his Shakespeare. He had studied Marlowe. He could recite poetry, loved words and paper. And uh, so it, it wasn't that onerous for him to, to write uh, the book. And he, and he did it in probably nine months. Yes, that's right. Um, many people remember Stanleyville, um, which uh, was recaptured in uh, late 1964. Uh, but then after that, it became apparent that the, the rebels were holding a lot of nuns and priests, both black and white, uh, at mission stations all around uh, Stanleyville. And Mike was asked uh, to now go beyond his original brief and to rescue them. And so he and his men mounted these raids behind enemy lines. Um, there was certainly no picnic. Uh, pe people were injured and, and shot at during these raids and they rescued about uh, 2,000. And Mike went on every one of those raids uh, and, and even took a bullet across the, the forehead on one of them. Yes, that's, that's more or less true or not quite true. Um, the, the interesting thing is that Che Guevara took about a hundred or more Cubans with him to the Congo in 1965 and uh, had his camp in the hills outside a, a, a port on Lake Tanganyika called Baraka. Mike and his men came ashore then uh, there in an amphibious uh, attack and uh, became aware that there was a better quality of opposition of enemy. And it took them a good few days to, to capture the town and they also captured evidence that uh, they were speaking Spanish and were with Che Guevara. And um, yeah, so, so his attempt to bolster the rebel cause was, was pretty short-lived and pretty much a failure because he left a month or two after that. This is another one of these extraordinary things uh, about Mike. Um, 
the filmmakers decided to make the film in South Africa and they asked Mike to be their technical advisor and so that's what he did. Uh, he was on set the whole time and uh, actually got to meet Richard Burton and being a Shakespeare lover himself, you know, he was able to discuss King Lear and other Shakespearean topics with Burton, not at great length, I hasten to add. Um, but, but, but here's the extraordinary thing. Burton was Mike's hero. And here was Burton playing Mike Hoare. Um, and, and so that was uh, a, a high moment for Mike in his whole life because he, he, he adored R Richard Burton. All right, I'll just show you the cover. Bang. <laughs> there it is. 